snow trench. Pretty cool. I'm gonna grab a couple branches, make the bedding, and then we'll see if we can't catch ourselves a coyote for breakfast. You're probably wondering what kind of meat this is. It's actually coyote meat. We're all cooking some coyote meat. They, they had no limits. If they could catch it, they could cook it, they could eat it. Well, good day guys. Welcome to another survival challenge. This one's gonna be a little bit different. As always, I'm always going after a different animal in a different way. But I thought I would give you an update of this very inefficient way of catching food. It's called squirrel snaring. I got the camera set up here and I just did a quick review. I've been setting this and resetting it for about two, three weeks now. And every time I come, the snares are all messed up. This one's pinched down into a little thing and I actually know the story on it so I'm gonna play that to you right now while you're listening to me I got a sheared off one here too which is always nice to see this one's completely cut off and then there's another one it's just tangled up here I actually hung some black walnuts in a bag as an enticer and threw some black walnuts down this was another occasion when I came out to check it every single one of my snares are messed up here so I'm gonna do now is make this safe I'm gonna keep it up here because I'm gonna keep experimenting with it but if I hang these down below then I'll avoid catching anything and then I don't have to redo my whole snare business. Kevin's been uh, in and on the property every once in a while so he checks it for me. So what I've noticed is every time I've come here is the snares have been messed up. Now this might work in the maybe a northern, more northern region. We do have black and gray squirrels um, on the property here and they're bigger and they're fatter and the red squirrels are smaller. So what I wanted to do is avoid doing any belly catches on the red squirrel. So I made the snare loop pretty small so that they could just fit their heads in so it could be that the black squirrels are just giant plows and they come through plow everything out of the way and then it's ineffective on the red squirrels but there's no real way of of making this such that you would not get belly catches on squirrel on red squirrels but at the same time time still be able to catch the black and gray squirrels if you catch what i mean i wouldn't recommend this the the meal's too small I wouldn't even recommend this as a trapping method. I mean, it can work, but for the amount of food that you're gonna get, <laughs> there are more efficient ways. That's why we're using the rat traps. So rat traps, I recommend. Squirrel snaring, I do not. It is not a viable snaring technique for me. Like I said, this has been going on for like four weeks now, and I have yet to produce anything effective. Although on camera, I did see a leg catch on a black squirrel. And uh, you know, you can't, catch, you can't catch a squirrel anywhere other than the neck and expect to catch it because they have snipping snippers, back teeth, and you know, once it got caught in the leg, it just dangled around for a few minutes and then finally figured out how to snip the wire off and it was back in business stealing. Well, actually, <laughs> I found this is a pretty effective way of storing nuts because they haven't been managed to get into this and they've tried a lot. So anyway, I'm gonna pull that card right now and we're gonna get on to today's survival challenge. It's always a new structure and catching, trying to catch a new thing. My idea, of course, as always, is to try to do something different and challenging. So let's get on with it. Uh, we're only a few, man, it's bright today. We're only a few steps into our adventure. And we've already got a good, pretty good hint of what I'm gonna try to do today. It's gonna be one of the hardest animals to trap so far. But again, I wanna be able to catch anything at any time, in any season, anywhere, maybe, maybe the world. Although that's pretty ambitious. So we've got here is coyote tracks and we've had a fresh dumping of snow last night. So these are brand spanking new and they're actually meandering through the swamp here. And we're not going to be too far set up so we, we should be able to go after maybe this particular coyote i do have some news for you guys we'll check another camera up the way hint there's a lot of activity around here i want to thank my sponsor harry's what's the best thing about shaving well you know what it's getting rid of the neck beard that itchy scratchy stuff the worst part about shaving is how dull and blunted the razors get. Obviously, I keep myself looking the best by letting this stuff grow and then get rid of the, all the undercoat. Harry's is a personal care brand that has reinvented the way you shave, helping you to shave in a premium, hassle-free way. Help Harry's supports great causes as they give 1% of the global sales to nonprofit organizations that provide mental health care to men, veterans, and LGBTQ plus youths in need. What makes Harry's different than other shaving brands? For starters, it's got a nice heavy weighted handle, a flex hinge, which allows you to 
contour around your face. It's got a precision trimmer blade, comes with free case, which will protect it, keeping it fresh in transport. Best part about the shaving gel, rich in texture. It's for everybody too, even for those with sensitive skin like mine, because it contains only natural ingredients. It's also easy to get the razor refills ordered straight to your door every few weeks as needed. The German blades are sharper than ever. You can order them right to your door and they're only two bucks. Redeem your trial set for just three bucks at harrys.com slash the wooded beardsman. You'll get an incredible deal. Five blade razor, weighted handle, travel cover, and foaming gel. But act fast while supplies last. Oh boy, that snow is deep, man. It's up to my, up to my knees at least. I should have snowshoes out here, but I don't, which means I'm not gonna be going too far. Not at this rate. I'm thinking I wanna make something, you know, that I haven't made yet. And uh, it, I don't have to put it anywhere particular. I wanna be out of the wind a little bit, which I am, it's not a windy day. I wanna be kinda near a pine tree. There's a pine there, there's a pine there. There's some cedars here. The pine's what I'm after. But I don't know, I'm not real particular on this one. This is one of those things that you can just kind of build whatever. Obviously got the sled today and I got a little bit more gear than usual, but that's based on the animal I want to get. So you know what? I'm just gonna put the freaking shelter right here. In the comments, there's always comments and there's always a couple comments that bother me. I know they shouldn't bother me, but I'm a human being just like you. The guy that's never done it, or that's done it once or has heard it one way and it's been anchored into his mind and then that's the only way to do it anymore and you could sit under this tree here and uh you know of course one of the comments i said is that this is more shelter that you're ever going to need and then you can make a fire out front here and this would be perfectly fine for survival the idea about survival is you're matching your survival shelter with the materials you have in the environment you happen to be in I have spruce, I have cedar, I have snow. So it's gonna be something along those lines. Well, you know what? I'm always trying to do something different. I always need the gear to match the environment. I wanna show you kind of what the gear I have to work with today. As you know, I'm a licensed trapper. And so I got, I got foothold, foothold traps for coyote. I got some, I don't have any wax dirt. It's one thing I didn't have, but I have some uh, peat moss, which is a decent substitute. And uh, I've got some coyote scent, which I put in the jar because it was starting to bother. What's well, it's fox and coyote scent <laughs> lure. It was starting to bother my wife. <laughs> you catch my drift, a coy coyote, or was it a coyote? No, cougar, <laughs> but I'm thinking fox smell. <laughs> so anyway, she's my fox. And uh, what else do I have in here? I've got some other tools. Uh, supplied so these these are Duke traps. Uh, you look those guys up. They're a really awesome company to work with and I also got a bunch of other gear from the Can the Canadian Coyote Company including a pretty cool digger uh, Device thing to get to put the seat the traps in and they, they're the ones that sent me the scent and uh, I've got some other a sifter which I don't think I'll use today, but uh, I might I'm mostly gonna rely on the snow and they did send me some uh, anchors and some things like that, some other tools. Tricks of the true tools of the trade, I should say. Let's get working on this little snow trench here. I'm, I don't want it to take longer than about half an hour, 20 minutes, to, like something like that. Just get it done, bang it out, and then we can move on to actually trying to find some food. <laughs> All right. Well, as for the shovel, I know there's a guy out there. There's at least 35 people out there who do not carry a shovel in the winter. And that's fine. Don't carry a shovel in the winter. You can borrow my shovel if you're hanging out together and you're gonna use it because a shovel is the most important tool to have in the winter. Have it in your pack. I got this light one, super duper light one, 12 bucks. You can get them on sale I've probably almost anywhere. Doesn't have to be heavy duty or nothing. This one's lasted a couple of challenges already, so I'm a big fan of it. Uh, just a little scoop shovel. Bring a shovel. Don't bring a shovel. I don't care. Do your own challenge. You can do your challenge however you want. And this isn't survival straight up. Although probably some of the techniques I teach you about survival will probably come in handy if you ever happen to be so far in the woods you can't find your way out i mean that's why you do this in various environments various techniques various materials is because that's going to make you better if you ever happen to need it you guys got to see this. this is really cool 
So I've only been digging for what, like maybe three minutes or so, but check this out. This is freaking cool. There's a hole in here and it's actually crystallized here solid. Now I didn't make this, trust me, I didn't make this here. There's a solid hole here, a ring around it, and it looks like it's all crystallized material up top here, which means something's been sitting in here, breathing or exhaling to can make this condense, and then it's refreezed. Now, if I hazard a guess, it doesn't really lead anywhere. Something's been spending some time in that little hole there in a snow trench. I mean, what are the freaking odds of that? We found an animal who's doing the exact same survival strategy that we're doing. That just goes to show the importance and insulative properties of snow. It has a pretty, really, well, high, high R value per inch. Uh, you can look that up or maybe I'll include that in the description below. But uh, my buddy, Jeremy, one wildcrafter actually made a video of grouse exploding out of the snow or they crawl in and then they'll spend the night underneath the snow protected and insulated from the environment. And if a predator comes by, like a human being, they'll actually bust out of the snow. So go check out one, one wildcrafter. So here's a little quick update on my snow trench. You can see it's probably high enough. Um, a snow trench environment, you wanna be in about, you know, five feet of snow. I think we're in about three feet of snow. So we're gonna bank the edges up a little bit. We're not gonna make it any wider than we need to because we still have to make a little bit of a covering. That's gonna come simpler than how we made the dome shelter. The dome shelter was out of cedars. This one, the objective is to make it a little bit more flat. I got a saw with me today, so I'm gonna use it. I, you can make this shelter without a saw, don't get me wrong. And you're more than welcome to do it without a saw. I'm just going to use a saw because it's going to make it so that I can get bigger branches off this tree and the building's going to go a lot faster. You could absolutely just bust these off and put them over top and have no issues at all. But if you have the tools, use them. And part of survival is being prepared. That means bringing the stuff that you actually need to survive. That's part of the motto. There's a couple things I did there. For starters, knock the branches off. There's snow on the branches. If you don't knock them off, they're going to get all over you. Second thing I did was I put my hood up and the hood up there's a good purpose for that obviously so it doesn't get down your back and your neck that's the absolute worst you'll never dry off for that that'll always be right in the worst spot and uh, when you go to sleep at night it's just gonna wreck you now I've got snow on me so what I'll do is I'll brush it off real quick so it doesn't because it once it's in powder form it's fine once it melts it turns into water and it soaks into your clothes as you can see the branches that I grabbed were mostly bare branches and that's okay that doesn't harm the tree so much it's the lower branches anyway those don't get the sunlight the sunlight reaches the top branches so the tree is not too bothered cut them off right where the branch meets the tree the tree will heal over just fine now we just want to push on it make sure it's not going to collapse on us again this is just a matrix so now we got to find some pine tree some thicker pine that will produce a better barrier now this tree here will make a better cover because it's thicker, it's a smaller tree, it's exposed more to the sun so it has more green material. So we have a couple options here. We could snap off the ends or we could be a bit more ambitious. And we'll grab the whole lower branches. You can see how much more dense this is, but it's not super dense. So it's gonna take a little bit more work to jig this together to make a better roof. But with volume, we'll get there. We don't wanna kill the tree. And uh, if we just take off the lower branches, we won't do that. Here's a good load. Let's see how far we get. So that's about what you can make in about a half an hour. That's not bad. This is something, no joke, a half an hour that will save your freaking life. 
if you needed it to save your freaking life. Thankfully, we don't need it to save our life today, but you never know. One day you may need your life saved. So I'm pretty happy with that. In fact, I probably don't even need to add any more, but I will because I'm kind of a perfectionist when it comes to these things. I've got the ability to kind of walk around the sh shelter a little bit because I shoveled around and I kept my tail ends here and they're not too wide. Just in case there's a problem, you want to be able to address it. And as simple as that, pile of snow, a couple of tree branches, you got yourself a freaking shelter. Well, you should probably go inside and make sure it's cool. Let's get a perspective on things. Now, one thing about the snow structure, snow trench, well, we need some pruning still, obviously. We're getting all stuck in inside of it. Is that it's not big. <laughs> it's tickling my nose. <laughs> there we go. Oh, you don't want to look up when you do this because you might get some debris in your eyeball holes. Oof, uh, okay. Uh, that's the thing. It's not going to be, it's a trench. <laughs> it's not, it's not a, it's not a house or not. Actually, you should have shoveled this out first. Anyway, it's not a house. It's a, it's a trench. So as the name implies, it is uh, very small. <laughs> okay, so we're in. And this will do, I can see there's some holes in the top, obviously, but you know, if you get a heavy snow load, what happens is over time, it actually sticks on top of it. and makes it more of a webbing and uh, gets better with time rather than worse. Ooh, not a shelter that could be used. Ooh, you know, if it starts to rain, you're kind of screwed with that one. Might as well just go hang out under a tree at that point in time. But you get the idea, you know, this is a, it's a snow shelter. And that's what it's meant for. Snow trench, pretty cool. I'm gonna grab a couple branches, make the bedding, and then we'll see if we can't catch ourselves a coyote for breakfast. Hey man, can I borrow your shovel? Sure, you, you can borrow my shovel. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna not lend my shovel. Do you need a shovel? I'll lend it to you. Happily. Come on over to the dark side. The dark side where you carry a shovel in the winter time. <laughs> this episode is called Roasting the Guy Who Says Don't Bring a Shovel. <laughs> There's some other guys out there too. Oh, don't listen to this guy. He doesn't know what he's talking about. So what? <laughs> sometimes I, sometimes I don't. You know what? I've done some things, and of course this challenge is all about, well, trying new things and testing out your skills. I mean, have you caught all the different animals that I've caught? So when you're in any environment, you can catch something. You're not anything, and certainly not everything. That's one of the things too. How am I gonna catch every animal of one species if I've only caught one animal of each species? That's the best way to preserve all the animals. If we started harvesting one of each, each person, then we wouldn't have just a bunch of cows, chickens, and pigs. And if more people ate bears, there'd be more bears. It's as simple as that. We'd be throwing our food waste in the bush to keep the bear population going, which is incidentally what bear hunters do. And so they probably feed more bears than they ever take and eat. So that makes it a renewable resource. The same as coyote. If you manage to catch one, there's always gonna be six more to replace it. And it's more about balance, keeping things in check and making sure we have lots of different animals, not just deer, not just coyote, but both. If all we take is deer, and we don't take the coyote, then the population's become unbalanced. And maybe you're the guy who thinks we shouldn't take deer either. And that's fine. You win. You can eat plants all you want, and you can complain about what other people eat all you want too, I suppose. I'm not gonna stop you. It's all cultural. So depending on what culture you happen to live in will dictate whether you think eating a dog is okay or not. Eating pet dogs is probably not okay in any in any culture. You don't eat somebody's family member, but a wild dog, 
coyote, where there's lots of them and they roam free and wild. Sure, why not? Makes good eating. Okay, that's enough talking. Um, maybe I'll clear this area out a little bit more so that I'm ready to cook in it. Because I can't have a fire in here, it's just too much stuff. I got all cut up in things and I, somebody gave me some really good advice. I'm going to balance out the good and the bad, obviously. Is uh, Somebody mentioned when I made my bedding last time to actually put some spruce down on the bottom first rather than just grass and hay because this will insulate the bottom. The grass and hay, you can, well, you can see here, it is wet and over time it absorbs the moisture and so this will provide a little bit of a layer uh, to protect it. So let's do that now before we get too far on with things. Obviously, like the guy, one guy said, shelter is important. It's not the most important thing in the winter. I still think water is the most important thing. He said you can go two or three days without water, which is true, ish. I mean, sometimes you can't go, sometimes you can't go without one day without water. Anyway, I don't think it's a bad idea to get the shelter ticked off first, but also know you can hang out under a tree and just be fine. Uh, depending on the conditions, of course, and the environment you have to be in. Of course, use your discretion. Not every situation is the same, not every environment is the same, not all materials are the same. Nothing's the same. You do you and I'll do me. Thank you for the person who put some thought. I'm not saying that other people put, don't put thought into their comments, but sometimes, I don't know, maybe they're just not thinking things through. But that's a thought that's thought through. It's a complete thought. That makes sense. It works. It's going to provide some loft and it's materials that were here in the environment that we could use. So it works. But well, there's your 30 minute shelter. It's not beyond the scope of survival to make this shelter. You could probably make this shelter without a shovel even. You know, you could do the, the old heave ho, heave ho, like paddling a boat. In fact, when I was a kid, that's pretty much how I made my shelters. With a little spade bit actually. You know, for gardening, we used to raid the tool shed. What can we use today? Oh, there's a spade. You use a spade to hollow out a snow bank. And then the rake made a really good job of like making the tunnel bigger. And then the one guy at the front grabs the stuff and shoves it out through his feet at the back and you end up with a nice big long tunnel. Not much different than this. Hey, why do you keep touching my whiskers? 30 minute shelter. Beauty. Okay. So now I gotta try to catch a coyote. <laughs> I have no idea how I come up with these things. It's like, what have I not done before? I haven't snared a squirrel. Let's try to snare a squirrel. Let's put your life on the line and trying to learn a brand new technique. <laughs> Silly. So I guess we'll get the sled going. I do have an idea in mind where I've had the camera out for a few weeks and there's been miles and miles of coyote coming through the property on a regular basis and i've seen i've seen some trails coming through here what the coyote do is they actually do a, a a loop and so like every three or four days they kind of blast through an area pick off whatever they can you know the weak animals they're not always in the area which makes it more risky to try to catch one the same night but i will this is something i will leave the traps out for a good length of time and uh, if I don't catch one on this challenge, we'll definitely revisit it. If I get one on the first try, that'll be something. All right, well, I got all my gear with me here. What's kind of cool is I'm following a coyote tracker right now, but I'm kind of in the low-lying spot. And so if I set the trap here, it's a foothold trap. If I set it here, the chances when it gets milder out, it'll start to melt and then that'll get, that'll make the trap ineffective. The whole thing about coyote trapping with footholds is you don't want the trap itself to freeze closed or open, I should say, because you need the tra trap to activate. So I'm still, I'm still on tracks. They're all kind of scattered through the woods here. And uh, let's come around the bend. I'm gonna get up to some higher ground over here and near where the, the camera was set. I have a better idea of what we're into. And then uh, see if I want a minute to learn from the trap course and put into effect. So I've been watching a channel called uh, Coon Creek Outdoors and uh, he's offered a lot of trapping tips like don't come to me for trapping advice. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to help you in that department but uh, go check him out Coon Creek Outdoors. He's got tons and tons of information uh, I trap all kinds of animals including coyote. Now I think I'm up to a spot here like I've been following tracks the whole way and I just got to 
kind of decide where I want to stop. Maybe one time I'll go over like what I think you guys should bring on like a really long survival or like if you want to live a, a, a year in the wild. You guys interested in that? Like all the tools you would need to survive a year in the wild. Now, I don't know, every area here looks about the same to me, but I do want to be off the trail. I do want to draw the animals from the trail, maybe just over here. And I think, cause it's uphill and I know the animals are coming down this trail both directions. I think if I put it kind of right in this spot here, that they'll just have to come off the tra tra trail a little bit, off the trail trap a little bit off the trail a little bit into the trap the idea is you want to get the animal to step in a specific spot and then that trap will fire around their foot and then they'll be caught of course alive and that's a good thing because we don't want to catch somebody's pet dog by example and it's not a kill trap um, and it's not a harm trap they're rubber jaws and the jaws are designed so that they don't hurt the animal it, th these are not like in the cartoons okay they're just not they're not designed to be those big metal draws you saw in uh, jaws you saw in Disney. It's not that. Those ones are. <laughs> I don't even know if those are. Well, they're de they're definitely not legal anymore. Whether they're used anymore, I would highly doubt it. These are rubber jaw. Uh, you can get offset jaws as well, and that means that there's a gap in between, and so that doesn't crush the animal's leg completely. Yeah, there's a lot of force here, but it's not designed to hurt the animal. So if you do catch somebody's pet dog, you can release it. But anyway, it's not designed to kill the animal. And there's an anchor down below. We drive that down into the ground and there's a bunch of swivel points so that when the animal twists its leg around, it doesn't wrap and tore, tear any of the leg up. It uh, basically will spin on itself. Uh, how's that for survival? Okay, so it's not survival. I don't know. Do you define survival? It's an auger bit. I'm gonna drill a hole, and it's this is called dirt hole set. Um, and I'm gonna put some bait down there. I've got some old salmon I salted, so that's gonna be shoved down the hole. And then presumably the coyote's gonna come by here and put his nose in the hole. And while he's trying to dig out what's in there, he's gonna step on my trap. I have no idea how deep that needs to be. <laughs> that's a heck of a hole. Tell you what, it's designed to kind of look like an animal had buried something in there, you know, something of interest. So I have a little bit of fur I can tuck down there, uh, and along with the bait. So visually, the animal will see something, and then it will want to want to dig for it, and then hopefully it steps on the trap. I don't know if I betted it 100% right. This is difficult conditions. Something you should probably start to learn in the fall when it's not like snow and everything else. But the idea is you want to make it a spot where this coyote is going to step on and uh, it not look weird. Obviously it looks weird because there's freaking snow everywhere and now there's a little dirt. I will hide it a little bit more. I'll add some more dirt on top. Um, I do want to show you something first. So it is illegal to mess around with the trapper's traps, but if you happen to be come along with one, then like obviously contact the landowner. But if it's an emergency, like you, you obviously you can tell somebody's pet. Again, this is illegal, but you should probably know how to use it anyway, just in case. You just depress the sides like so, and uh, I'm not quite strong enough. I use a foot and a finger to open them and to close them, or not close them, they close on their own. But uh, once you pr depress these two sides, the jaws actually open and how it activates is obviously when the animal steps on the pedal here and that will release the mechanism closing the jaw. So it's pretty simple contraption. And then the rest of it's just earth anchored down below. And then once you pull up on the earth anchor, it actually turns sideways and then it can't pull out of the ground. Uh, very well and then aside from that there's swivel points so you can see on here if I spin it it keeps spinning even though the top's not spinning because this is going to be down in the ground and then the rest of it uh, should spin as the animal tries to uh, free itself and again you got to check these traps every single day because it's not a kill trap so this is some salmon I caught and uh, it's cold outside but it's not melting because I actually mixed some salt in there so I'm going to put like a couple spoonfuls of that in there and that'll uh, give off a pretty good odor for a long period of time. And that's what you want. You want the trap to keep working for you. That's what survival is. You know, the mountain men that came out here and conquered the land and trapped for a living, they didn't hunt and fish with one rod, you know, with one gun. They hunted on their way to their traps. And trap is an integral part of how Canada was developed. Any professional trapper is going to know you need like a pan cover, which goes over, over top of the pan to prevent anything from getting underneath the pan. 
or you could use a little bit of insulation. Uh, probably traditionally they would have used something else like um, leaves or gr dry grass. That will work, not well, but it'll work. Um, I got some birch bark, some yellow birch, and I'm gonna put, tuck that underneath. And it's not the right way to do it, but it's the way that I have today. I need some, <laughs> I need some insulation to stick under those pans to make sure that it fires, that make sure dirt doesn't get underneath it and uh, keeps that loft. You know, you want that pan to depress really fast. And I haven't done anything to these traps. They're straight out of the box. I did, I did put them through the dishwasher to get rid of all the grease off them, but I haven't dyed them and I haven't waxed them. Again, too far into the season for me to get going on the trapping, but here we are. So the only thing left is a little bit of coyote fox lure, driving my wife nuts. Oh, now I'd rip the bag. <laughs> I, had it, I had it in a mason jar, plus a Ziploc, Plus the bag it came in, <laughs> plus it's in a jar itself. <laughs> what is this stuff called? Forsyth, Forsyth Animal Lures K9 Triple Take, Fox Coyote and Lynx. It honestly, it kind of smells skunk-like, <laughs> which I guess, oh, is the idea. You get it all, oh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Ooh, that is so smelly. <laughs> all right, I gotta get out of here. So I'm just gonna, <coughs> <coughs> oh, that smells like wrong ass. <laughs> that does not smell good. Okay, so I probably don't need a lot of that. <coughs> All right, so I just gonna put a goober like that. I'm just gonna put it right around the right around the bait hole here. I guess that's gonna draw them in. <coughs> oh my god! <coughs> it, it, initially, it smelled like skunk, <coughs> and then it smelled like death. <laughs> okay, I got. I gotta put this away. Oh, no wonder it was driving my wife nuts. I thought it was because she was a fox. <coughs> oh my god. Oh, that just smells like a dead animal. I do not want to get any of this on my fingers. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, I'm gonna set the trail camera way over there. That's what the set looks like. It obviously stands out quite a bit with the dirt there, but I'm gonna sprinkle a very light amount of snow over top just to make it kind of look normal. Just a little bit, a little bit of snow. I don't wanna put too much because that'll stop the set from working. It might make it freeze. Although we're gonna have pretty consistent cold temperatures here. And uh, you know, I don't want anything to kind of stand out, although you know what, it stands out anyway. And I'll learn over time what the tolerance is as far as anything goes, but you can see it's pretty, it's pretty well blended in. If we get a light snow, it'll get even more blended. So just gotta put the trail camera up here now and uh, we'll get on to putting another set. Probably won't film that because that's not all that interesting to you guys probably. You guys are more interested in survival and you might not ever get to trap. But uh, we're gonna put the trail camera way over here so that if an animal comes from this direction here down that trail it's not going to it's going to trigger the trail camera but it's going to be in that vicinity there by the time it goes on because i don't want the trail camera to be a factor for me losing my lunch Back home, I found something pretty cool here. I gotta set her down because it's kind of heavy. Oh, it's actually a nice flat rock, and uh, I think that will work really well for cooking. I haven't done rock cooking in a long time. I find it's 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 fun. It's primitive. It's cool. It's interesting. It works really well. It's a change. All those good things. Could just put it on a stick, but. I think it's fun to play around with the caveman -y business. The fire's looking a little sad because it's got no wood. But uh, I'm gonna lighten up all my stuff out of my sled. <sighs> Enjoy the vitamin D, soak that, that up. Feels really good. And then uh, we'll get a fire going, I think. And uh, those traps aren't gonna work to uh, day. They won't, I mean, <laughs> it could be some fluke, crazy, nasty thing happen. But coyotes usually don't move during the day, so it won't uh, definitely won't happen until tomorrow morning at, at the earliest. You guys have to stick around for that. 
But um, I'm gonna get the fire going anyway because I want to collect wood and I want to heat that rock up and uh, get a little something to eat. In the meantime, while we're waiting for sun to drop down and continue the rest of our survival, I do have one more trap to put out, which you can do if I have time. But priority now is uh, after shelter, we need a fire so that we can have water and uh, cook food. That's the three priorities, food. No food, no water, no shelter. That's what it is. But this is not exactly this challenge. Um, it's not exactly this time. I'll show you why, but after we get the fire started. Let's go get some wood. Luckily we got some yellow birch here. Uh, not as good as white birch, but it'll have to do. It's a good fire starter, it's got some oils in it. Hopefully you guys see the value of carrying a saw. And a sled too, for winter. It means you can carry so much more wood, make short work of it, carry bigger pieces, carry a lot more of it, and you can go a bigger distance to a spot that has the wood that you want dry standing dead standing wood you know collecting the stuff you can see some of the stuff poking out here although it's not good quality stuff but anything with has no bark on it this one's frozen down a little bit but this will work here it's a little bit heavier than what i would like um, but anything without bark and actually if you're smart and you own property what you could do is actually prop them up against a tree like this and then next time you need it it will be nice and dry. But that's a long-term strategy, and that's something that we're mostly concerned about when it comes to survival. So you got a good chunk of wood here, head back, get the fire started, and then once it's started, then we can always collect some more. Right, we got the fire lit all i've done combination of birch bark and uh, dead standing flowering plants mixed in with some branches i took off of the just the edge of the pine the dead lower branches of the pine tree and that's the tinder and kindling and then on top of that i'm putting the dry stuff now you might be wondering what am i doing with these giant this giant fire here it's going to be a big fire and that's okay i'm going to go collect some wet wood and the reason for the wet wood is because i have something in mind as far as cooking goes and that's the reason why i have a big fire as well we selected that tree on purpose it was kind of gnarled up with another birch and so i think, I think it's a maple one of the two was going to happen either the birch was going to die or the maple was going to die and the maple was losing that competition because it was jumbled up with the with the birch so by cutting it out it actually doesn't do much to the forest it's still very healthy and then i knock the branches from the top down on the ground and that will be food for rabbits they love those uh flowering buds well not flowering yet but you know the leaf buds they love eating that stuff as do the deer but mostly usually they can't reach it because they're up high so that's going to serve multiple purposes uh, and help the forest overall rejuvenate and uh, that's a good idea to do on any property cutting some trees down actually will help the animals and so you know do it properly and we're just going to let this uh fire go build up real high and then die back down and then i'll show you what i'm going to do with those wet that wet maple wet for a reason So I could take this rock and just put it right on top of the fire. It'd be option number one. It's not a good option. The rock will get too hot too fast. 
and then I won't be able to put anything underneath the rock anymore. It'll still work, I just won't be able to control the fire as well and uh, it'll risk breaking the rock just because of the intense heat. So that's option number one. Option number two is I could find some other rocks that are tall enough, like fairly tall, right? And then I can put that underneath. Finding a rock is really difficult in the winter. I happened to know where this rock was, so I was able to find it. I had made a mental note of it. I actually propped it up against a tree in the snowbank. Well, it's in the snow now, but uh, I knew exactly where to find it. To find another rocks in the winter, almost impossible. That's why I was never firing in the winter. Just there's no way to find them. They're frozen down to the bottom. So that'd be option number two. So option number three, of course, is the one I'm going to use. So what I've done here is I've kind of sharpened the end a little bit. And uh, when I was setting the, the uh, coyote trap, I did notice that the ground is actually not really frozen for some reason. It's been like, I wouldn't say it's a mild winter, but the snowfall is protecting it. So once I pound these down deep enough, it actually, you know, goes in the ground pretty good. Now I'm not gonna make it this high, but what I am gonna do is gonna pound it in to the, as much as I can and then I'll just cut it off where I can't put it in anymore. That's a pretty simple solution. And then I'll get an idea of the height I want to make it. So um, I could wait a little bit longer for that fire to die down, but I think I'll just put it in right now and adjust it while it's kind of going. And then I can maybe start heating that rock up and I'll show you, I'll show you what I have to eat too. You're probably wondering what kind of meat this is. <laughs> it's actually coyote meat. I saved some back from the coyote I shot last year, so it's the back straps, um, because I knew tonight I wasn't gonna be able to uh, get anything to eat. And I wanted to be authentic, authentic to the challenge. And so here we are, rock cooking some coyote meat. Now I will advise you for any canine not to eat the legs. Um, I had a bad experience with eating the legs before. It tastes like wet dog, uh, but the back straps are fine to eat. And uh, there's probably a way to cook the legs so they don't taste like wet dog. I just haven't figured out how. You know, all animals have a scent. I've told you this before. Even uh, porcupine tastes kind of like BO, you know, tastes like armpit. And uh, that's because if you miss the gland, that's what happens. And uh, you know, every animal is edible. Porcupine, they ate woodpecker, they ate loon, they, the common loon. I don't know if you guys know what a loon is. Some of you guys don't, but um, it's a water bird and it's very oily. So I can imagine it tastes very pungent. Um, they ate robins and you know, they ate everything. They, they had no limits. If they could catch it, if they could catch it, they could cook it, they could eat it. Um, and I'm gonna obviously cook this well to make sure that it's safe to eat. And uh, my experience with coyote has always has been good. My experience with fox hasn't been good because that, I ate the leg on that one. Actually, I would, t I would say it wasn't good. The meat was good. The aftertaste was extremely strong and not something that I would recommend, but that was the leg. I gotta get some more wadobo on this. I should say too that uh, when you're cooking on a rock like this, you gotta use a pretty intense heat and it's a limited time frame because that rock could break or shatter at any moment in time, and the whole operation could be at a loss. And I am camping a little bit close to where I'm trapping, and so that might ruin things a little bit. But I will keep the traps up for, you know, a couple, well, I'll keep going. Trust me, I want to catch a coyote more than anything this year, and uh, I want to catch at least one animal 
of every different species of animals that you're able to trap. So that's going to be uh, mink, uh, muskrat, otter, beaver. Man, there's just, there's just a pile of them. And then I can go north and do lynx. Uh, I'd have to go south to do bobcat. What else is there? Wolf. That's my goal, is to learn how to be able to catch a variety of different animals so that when, whenever something's in season, I can go out and actually go get it. And so that if I find myself in an environment, I know what kind of trap I need. I know how to set it. I know how to catch the animal. I know how to clean the animal. I know how to cook it. All right, well, I do want to get that off the fire before it burns and before I lose my rock. So I'll get my hands wet and that'll stop my gloves from burning. And then what we could do is put it down here on a couple of sticks. The reason I didn't put it on the ground is because the rock is hot and obviously the ground is super cold. And so what could happen obviously is the temp temperature differential could shatter that rock. And you could see, whoa, that was close. That, that is right through. Um, that was about to collapse. <laughs> I think the other one might be okay. It's okay. Well, I'm not sure if you know too many people who have tried coyote meat. I will give it a go. It was cooked all the way through. That's super important. Like any predator, it could be carrying parasites. Honestly, this tastes like, it tastes like any good red meat. There's nothing wrong with it. That's hot. There's nothing wrong with that meat. If you were in an area and the only thing you ate was grains all day, if you could come across any kind of meat, you would eat it. I mean, sometimes people grow all kinds of crops and you get rats and rodents and all these other things that get inside the crop. Well, if you didn't have any meat and you were poor, you would make do with what you had. Well, at least I'm not going to go to bed hungry this time. I learned my lesson from trying to chop something new with the squirrels and that didn't work out, as you know. And that was not good. That was not fun. No, it's good, tender, juicy meat. Go for the back straps, man. Man, that rock is super hot to the touch still. I'm surprised. Like, I couldn't pick that up if I, <laughs> if I wanted to. And the meat, one of the cool parts about eating off a rock is the dinner stays warm, right? It's like a heating tray. So all that meat, it's like eating warm meat. Um, if you ever get a chance to eat, like, out of a cast iron pot, pan, do it, man. Oh, loving this. Got a beautiful fire. Actually, I don't have much short of, a, of wood around here, so I don't mind making a big fire. Plus, I got food in my belly, which is, of course, a rarity. I'm hoping those trail cameras really tell us the story about how the coyotes respond to, you know, intrusion, and smell. So whoever suggested that, putting that spruce boughs down and then the um, the grass on top. That's a big, that's a, that's a good one. I like that one. Last piece of meat, anybody want to try it? I know more than a few of you would give this one a go. How cool is that? Just put a couple pieces of, a uh, couple sticks down here underneath. Cook, serving platform. And the funny thing is it's still warm. I'm not lying to you. Try it. Coyote backstraps for the win. Oh, a couple more chews and I'll show you guys inside here. This is for snow exclusively. Like, don't think you can get away with this for other things. It's not a rain shelter. It's a snow shelter. <clears throat> Just long enough to fit my body in. Oh, we'll do another wood run there. See if we can't drum up something. Maybe we'll find a squirrel or something. You never know. Knock it in the head with a stick.
but I will save some wood back for the morning if I need it or in the middle of the night if I need it too and I'll probably grab some more birch bark and have it on hand just in case I got a it's an emergency we need to get a fire going real quick so there'll be a tinder bundle ready there'll be small branches ready and then there'll be enough wood to get a, a decent fire going if I have to but this is how this is what you do this is this is survival I did make a little bit of a mistake if you want to call it but I collected wood that was nearby but there's still a lot of wood I can see around me so I don't think this is going to be an issue it's one of the benefits of winter survival is that you know you, you do get ample light so what I was saying is you bring the wood nearby and you don't process you don't cut it so if you wake up and you're cold cutting the wood will actually heat you up beats wasting energy going for a run and I'm warm now, so I don't need to get warmer. So just drag more wood here, throw it in the pile, and uh, keep doing that till you run out of light. That's all you can do to stay warm in the winter. It's a warm fire, let me tell you what. <laughs> Straight flame, no smoke, hardly any smoke. Beautiful, got a nice bed of coals here. That's gonna be nice. It's gonna be a nice nice night, that's for sure. And uh, seeing the coyote work around fires. Now I don't know if it's the human scent. I, I, seemed, I think it's the fire, I think it's the fire pit. Something about fire that maybe coyotes associate with humans, but uh, they kind of shy away from the fire pit that we had around the tarp shelter. I got lots of footage from uh, coyote walking by that. And uh, yeah, it's, they, they approach the fire and they kind of smell it and then they back up on it. So I'm wondering, I think they smell obviously some scent in the, in the snow too. I know deer can. And uh, ooh, I might have to move in a second here and make sure I don't burn my pants. Oh, it's getting hot. But we'll see how they react anyway. <sighs> see how they react to the traps and whatnot. I'm curious to see. And uh, it'll be a learning experience for me. Never tried to trap one before. So I'm excited to go check tomorrow. <laughs> I don't know. I'll be listening at night just to, if I can hear any of the howling. I do often hear howling at night around here. Um, might even hear the, the trap go off or the animal get caught. That would be something pretty cool. To make sure my water doesn't fall over. That's a nice hot fire. You see my gloves steaming? <laughs> so if I can get these dried off, that'll be better for sleeping. <laughs> That's what happens. I forgot. I always bring an extra pair of gloves for this purpose so that I can have something to dry off. Well, that's the best of both worlds. I got a comfy, comfy bed and I got heat in my face still drying my gloves off. Whew, that's a warm fire. And I actually wouldn't want it any closer than that either. That's just like the perfect distance right there. And that's relaxing. There's nothing more relaxing than that. I try to use my gloves as a pillow here so I can have the, the heat of the fire. And that's working. <laughs> Whoa, that was close. Some flame shooting out here. Oh, but I can actually feel the warmth of the fire in my face here. This is ideal. I like this. Get the, the pillow here and just chill. It's a lot of work to build these shelters. Make the fire, cook a meal. It's worth it, man. Just to get away from everybody, get away from the city. Whew. That is a warm fire. I always wonder how long to ramble on to you guys for. 
well, it's getting dark and I kind of run out of things to say, so I'm gonna hit the sack and I'll catch you guys in the morning. Find out if we caught a coyote. Drew a couple logs on the coals there. Waiting for that to keep starting, get started, but uh, I don't gotta be anywhere today. Oh, Courtney and Holden, my wife and son, are uh, they're uh, in school today, at work, so I don't have to get back anytime soon. I just take my time getting up, let that fire heat up. We'll check our traps. Ouch. <laughs> Before I go, I want to say thanks for coming along with me. I really don't care if you guys subscribe, but I do appreciate you guys coming along if you watch the whole video right full stop. I don't want to say that at the very, very end. I want to say that now. I do appreciate having you guys along and supporting the channel. So Let's go see if we got a coyote. You guys excited? I'm freaking excited. The good news about this is nothing came through. Like I don't see any tracks or anything down the trail or anything like that. So I don't think a coyote even came through. So we know had no real chance of catching one. And I think, well, as I explained to you, they come through every, every two, three, four days or something like that. So just because we don't have one now, doesn't mean we can't get one another time. So anyway, we really appreciate guys coming along from this adventure and stay tuned. There'll be many more to come. If you watch the whole video, right, full stop.